Dr. Sandor, you are known widely uh, as the uh, father of uh, financial futures. So I can't stop uh, asking you this question. <laughs> as uh, the world transition out of LIBOR, which is expected in the middle of uh, 2023 and maybe could be earlier to SOFA, how is the evolution of the interest rate derivatives market shaping up? Well, I, I think you know that, that we try to plan for the future and try to anticipate mega trends. So far came, and we are now to the point that we anticipated that, in fact, corporates, banks, in investors are going to have a choice in an interest rate benchmark, and it will be no different than the difference between Dow Jones, S&P, Russell, that there are more indexes of equity than there are equities. And I think we're going to see choice be a dominant theme. Why would anybody think that we will go back to a broken system and have all of the risk in America in one interest rate benchmark. It's what caused us the problem to start. And I believe, as you do, Boonchai, that competition is a good thing. So from that day that you set out to try and transform the $9 trillion market, <laughs> has anything along this journey surprised you? Um, no, because uh, in, in some sense, and yes, in another, the no is the great German philosopher said that uh, change goes through three phases. And in the first, it is ridiculed. In the second phase, it's violently opposed. In the third phase, it's readily accepted. Every major innovation that I've been involved in has been ridiculed <laughs> in the early days. And the, the comments in 2012 were, this is stupid. LIBOR is never going to go away. It's at $500 trillion. Every big bank supports it. It's Europe. It's Asia. It's America. This is the best index. It's $500 trillion. Nothing could ever go wrong with LIBOR. And you're wrong. It's okay because a poll is as good as a market. So that happened with interest rate futures. It happened with acid rain. It happened with carbon trading. And it happened with, with Ameribor. And we're still getting the ridicule, but now it's just being violently fought. <laughs> and it will be accepted. Um, change takes 20 years. Uh, you've done many things so far from uh, sustainability finance to carbon trading to interest rates and navigated many different asset classes what is your secret sauce how do you want to be best known for and more importantly any advice for us in asia i say this to my students and i remind myself that that it's a long journey, but you have to think in terms not of years, but of decades. Um, and you have to position yourself for change that way. So that would be a, an event. Um, I think that the advice for you as an exchange is really to look at where you are regionally and what the needs are, you know, regionally, you know, monsoon futures if you could hedge monsoon risk think of the benefits that you could bring to the indian subcontinent the billion and a half people in the, on the subcontinent you know look at the obvious risks that are faced and do what markets do provide hedging mechanisms for those risks and certainly weather is a big one in 
And then there's got to be environmental markets. You know, if, if Indonesian forests are burning, they affect Singapore. And you got to figure out financial tools to create incentives to mitigate those things. So again, I, I think, as you know, Bunchai, I am so bullish on Singapore. I am so bullish on SGX. And I'm bullish on humanity. I think it is, uh, I will leave you with the following thought, um, is that it is a very bad bet to short humanity's ability to invent, okay? Don't ever short the inventive ability of human beings. They invent their way out of problems. I want to thank you if, if you don't have any other questions for um, giving me a platform. And I, I hope that in some small ways we may have provoked thoughts or ideas and your hosting forums like this is personally appreciated. I only wish it was in person. <laughs>